Hi, and thanks for being here. Make Sense of Magic is created and funded by myself and listener support. If you'd like to get involved in helping support the show, we now have a Patreon. If you're not sure what a Patreon is, it's basically a way to support your favorite creators in return for some small perks. I have three levels, and all three include my Disney book club. Thank you so much, Patreon members. Your support is so valuable and helps keep Mix and Some Magic running. Thank you so much. You can find the Patreon link to support in the show notes. That's enough of that. Thanks for being here. Let's get on with the show. Hi, I'm Melissa with Mix and Some Magic. I'm a Disney planning expert, and I'm here to mix a little magic into your day. Each week, I share Disney vacation planning tips, park strategies, and a little bit of Disney history sprinkled in. Of course, I like to include lots of Disney magic. Join me. Let's mix in some magic. Hello and welcome. Thanks for being here. I hope you're having a great day. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day to spend it with me and hang out and listen to this episode. I appreciate it. I'm happy to have you. I just got back from an epic Disneyland vacation with my brother and his wife and their four little kids, and it was so much fun. It's so fun to be there with little kids and see the magic from their perspective. And it's also hard to be there with little kids. My kids are all older. And so it was a different experience. I'd forgotten about being there with little kids, but I learned a lot. I remembered a lot. And I'm going to be talking um, more about visiting Disneyland with little kids. I've got some thoughts, some tips, some tricks, some information to share in a future episode that's coming soon. So stay tuned for that. Today, we are going to be talking all about using Genie Plus at Disneyland. Now, I've done an episode like this in the past, but it's been a few years and things have changed a bit. And I thought it was time to do another episode and really focus on Genie Plus, explain how it works, explain strategies and tips, explain what rides are available on Genie Plus, who should use it, who maybe shouldn't use it, those kinds of things. I get messages all the time from people who are like, I purchased Genie Plus and it was the biggest waste of money. Now, I hate to say it, but people who say that, it probably was a waste of money for them, first of all. But second, The reason it was a waste of money is because they didn't understand how to use Genie Plus at Disneyland. So if you are purchasing Genie Plus to go along with your Disneyland trip, it's an investment. It does cost a lot of money to add on, especially if you have a bunch of people that you are purchasing it for. So I don't want you to waste your money. So this episode is to teach you how to use Genie Plus so that you don't waste your money at Disneyland on this service. If you know how to use it and you're strategic and use it efficiently, then it's going to change your whole day at the Disneyland Resort. If you don't know how to use it and decide to just wing it, it probably will end up being a waste of money and you won't feel like you got very much value out of it. So we're going to talk all about that today. Using Genie Plus at Disneyland is much different than using Genie Plus at Walt Disney World. They cost different amounts. They include different things. So it's a totally separate thing. So if you're familiar with Genie Plus at Disney World and think that's all you need, that's not. It's very different at Disneyland. And personally, I've used it at both parks. I feel like it works better at Disneyland than it does at Disney World. So I get more value out of Genie Plus at Disneyland than I do out of Genie Plus at Disney World. And maybe I'll do an episode about using Genie Plus at Disney World sometime in the future. But for now, today, we are going to just talk about using Genie Plus at Disneyland. Okay, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll jump right into Genie Plus at Disneyland. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Mix and Some Magic. (music) 
before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to give a shout out to our amazing sponsor, Audible. I am now an Audible affiliate and I am so excited about it. I've been using Audible for years and I am really happy to have this chance to team up with a brand that I have loved and used for quite some time. If you love the magic of storytelling, but find it hard to make time for reading, Audible is your perfect solution. With Audible, you can listen to a huge selection of audiobooks, podcasts, and more, all from the convenience of your favorite device. Whether you're into thrilling mysteries, self-help, or epic fantasy, Audible has something for everyone because they have thousands of titles available. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. But that's not all. Members also get full access to a growing selection of included audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts. You can download or stream included titles all you want. Most of our Disney Book Club selections are available on Audible, including this month's title. And here's the best part. I've teamed up with Audible to offer you an exclusive deal. By using my special link, you can get a free 30-day trial of Audible. That's right, 30 days of stories, knowledge, and entertainment absolutely free. If you love podcasts, and you must because you're here, I know you'll love Audible. Just visit www.audibletrial.com forward slash mix and some magic to start your free trial today. That's www.audibletrial.com forward slash mix in some magic. I'll also include a link for you in the show notes. It's a fantastic way to discover the joy of audiobooks and to support my podcast at the same time. Happy listening and thanks to Audible for making today's episode possible. Welcome back. If you're visiting Disneyland Park soon, you need to know about Genie Plus. Disney Genie Plus at Disneyland is an additional fee. It starts at $30 per person per day right now. I mean, that could change at any time because when it was officially launched a few years ago, then it was $20. So the price does keep increasing. But as of this recording, it starts at $30 per person per day. But the cost can go up depending on crowd levels and demand. So if it's a busy day, you might find it costs $35 per person per day. So we'll talk more about that in a bit. But using Genie Plus can save you a ton of time waiting in long lines. But like I mentioned before, if you don't understand how to use it, it can be a complete waste of money. I don't want you to waste your money. So in this episode, we're going to cover everything you need to know about Genie Plus including how to use it efficiently on your Disneyland visit. The Disney Genie Plus system can seem overwhelming at first. No worries. I've used Genie Plus extensively. And by the end of this episode, I really want you to feel confident in using it and feeling like you understand how it works and that you know what you're doing and so you don't feel stressed about it. So that is my goal. Now, I have created a few touring plans that include Genie Plus to help you navigate the parks while you're using the Genie Plus system. And these plans will help you maximize your time in the parks and avoid the longest line. So if you're looking for a step-by-step -step guide to your day, then you'll want to grab one of those before your trip. I will put a link in the show notes. Okay, we're going to start with the very basics. What is Disney Genie Plus? Disney Genie Plus is a paid upgrade that gives you access to the Lightning Lane on select attractions throughout Disneyland and California Adventure Park on the most popular rides. So Genie Plus is a system at Disneyland that has replaced the old Fast Pass or Max Pass system. So using the Disneyland app, you can select the next available arrival window and then you enter the attraction when it's time using the Lightning Lane. So with Genie Plus, you get to skip the standby line and use the lightning lane instead. 
The lightning lane is always shorter than the standby line, so you're going to save time waiting in long lines, especially if you follow my tips. So keep listening till the end when I'm going to share my tips. Now, by skipping the longer standby lines, this is going to allow you to enjoy more attractions throughout your visit. There is also an a la carte lightning lane option available for the two most popular attractions at the Disneyland Resort. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Now, Disney also has another service called Disney Genie that's different than Disney Genie Plus. Disney Genie service is complimentary. With this free service on the app, the Genie will give you recommendations tailored to your specific interests and then create an itinerary for you based on the information that you give it. So in the My Day tab over on the Disneyland app, you'll find Disney Genie recommendations and any plans that you've made, including like dining reservations. And your plan that the Genie creates for you will update throughout the day in theory, and it's supposed to help you make the most of your visit. The problem is it's crap. It's what it is. It doesn't work at all. And their recommendations on the My Day tab are pretty unhelpful. Well, in theory, it's great, but it's just not, it just doesn't work. And guests complain that the Disney Genie never actually recommends most of their top attractions. It actually only lets you choose four attractions for the day that you want to ride on. And then supposedly it's going to tell you like craft a day for you and include those attractions but it often doesn't even send you to the to ride those attractions that were the most important on your list so it's kind of it's almost laughable honestly at this point and I've done testing on this and it was a complete disaster like I have followed along and done everything that it told me to do and it didn't put me on any of the rides that I had specifically told it I wanted to ride on it was just ridiculous. The system seems inclined to send guests to less crowded areas of the parks and to attractions with lower wait times, even if they're not on their to-do list. So even though I wanted to ride Space Mountain and Big Thunder Mountain and Matterhorn and Pirates of the Caribbean, it never told me to do this during the day because it always thought that the wait times were too long. So it just sent me to ride like Casey Jr. and then to go watch great moments with Mr. Lincoln, and I ended up not even being able to ride the four rides that I told it I wanted to ride. It was just silliness. So that being said, check it out. It's free. It's included. Like it's on your Disneyland park app, but use it with caution and be smart. I don't think that following it step-by-step is the right option for most Disney guests. Um, And following it exactly may give you a Disney day that is far from a day full of exciting attractions that you had imagined. Trust me, I have done that Disney day. I would just skip over that part entirely. Like your instincts for what you want to ride and go on are going to be much better than using that section of the Disneyland app. Now there is a tip board section of the Disneyland app that is much more helpful. It shows you current wait times for attractions and gives you the latest show times, things like that. So that is very helpful. So you will enjoy that. Okay, let's talk about PhotoPass because it is included with Genie Plus. Now, this is a great perk that you get when you purchase Genie Plus. I love PhotoPass because you can download and share all the photos taken by Disney photographers throughout the parks, and then you get access to all of your ride photos, which is really fun too. So you're going to love using PhotoPass. Pictures, in my opinion, make the very best souvenirs. So I'm really glad that this is included with Genie Plus. Also included with Genie Plus is Disney Photo Pass lenses. This is kind of like a filter that you can add to your pictures. And it's kind of a fun, a fun way to add a little extra to your trip, I guess. Also included with Genie Plus is an audio imagineering field guide. So through the app, you can listen to it's almost like a an audio tour that you would take at a museum. You can listen to that and it talks about like behind the scenes stories and insights and it's actually really cool. I was really excited about it when I first 
learned about it. I couldn't wait to check it out because I love audio tours at museums. I think they're so fun. And this works similarly. The only problem is it is very hard to hear the information because of the busyness and the noise in the parks. So if this is something that you're like, yes, I want to enjoy this feature, then you're going to probably want to make sure you have headphones so you can listen to it much more easily. Let's talk about what attractions are included with Genie Plus. So it's not all of them. Don't make that mistake thinking that every single attraction at Disneyland and California Adventure are included in Genie Plus because that is not the case. So there are select attractions that you can make a reservation for using Genie Plus, and then when it's your return time, you get to enter through the Lightning Lane. Now, you are limited to entering the Lightning Lane for these attractions to once per day. So you can only ride Space Mountain one time per day using Genie Plus. If you want to ride it again after you've used Genie Plus to ride it, you're going to have to wait in the standby line. Here are the Lightning Lane options included in Disney Genie Plus at each park. So for Disneyland, we have Autopia, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Buzz Lightyear, Astro Blasters, Haunted Mansion, Indiana Jones Adventure, It's a Small World, Matterhorn Bobsleds, Millennium Falcon, Smuggler's Run, Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Spin, Space Mountain, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Star Tours, The Adventures Continue, And Pirates of the Caribbean is being added for a limited time because Haunted Mansion is going down for a lengthy refurbishment. Pirates of the Caribbean is going to be temporarily taking its place in the Genie Plus lineup. Now over in California Adventure Park, we have Goofy Sky School, Grizzly River Run, Guardians of the Galaxy, Mission Breakout, Incredicoaster, Monsters, Inc., Mike and Sully to the Rescue, Soarin' Around the World, A Toy Story Midway Mania, Web Slingers, A Spider-Man Adventure, and Little Mermaid, Ariel's Undersea Adventure. Okay, you might have noticed that a couple of the most popular attractions at Disneyland are not included in the Genie Plus Lightning Lane system. Mainly, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance and Radiator Springs Racers. They are not part of the regular Genie Plus system. So the only way to ride these attractions is via the standby line. Or you can pay individually per attraction and make a separate Lightning Lane reservation so that you can enter the Lightning Lane entrance for those two attractions. I hope this is making sense. So if you want to skip the line, then you can buy an a la carte Lightning Lane that lets you skip the line, go into the Lightning Lane just for those two attractions. Now, guests may purchase these a la carte Lightning Lanes for two attractions per day. So you could do it once for Radiator Springs Racers and you could do it once for Rise of the Resistance. You can't do it two times for Rise of the Resistance, just once per attraction per day. Now you don't have to have Genie Plus to add the individual lightning lanes to your day. So maybe you've decided that you don't care about Genie Plus, you don't need that at all, but you do want to purchase an individual lightning lane to skip the line for Rise of the Resistance. You can totally do that. The cost for these individual lightning lanes is based on demand and crowd levels. So you can plan on it being $7 to $30 per attraction per person. On average, I would plan on spending about $20 per individual lightning lane if you choose to go that route. Now, like I said, there's only two. There's one at Disneyland, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, and over at California Adventure, it's Radiator Springs Racers. Let's talk for a minute about making Genie Plus fit into your budget because I know it's expensive. I have six people in my family and adding Genie Plus at $30 per person per day, yikes, that adds up. It's a lot of money. However, it is very, very valuable. So I do have some tips about how you can make it work in your budget that I think are really helpful. So these are things I use myself so that we can have Genie Plus. The first idea I have is you could just add it to one or two days of your visit. Genie Plus is not an all or nothing thing. So you could add it to just one or two days of your trip. So you could definitely go that route. You could also add Genie Plus to your entire trip, but make your trip a little bit shorter so you can afford to add Genie Plus. So if you were planning on visiting Disneyland for four days, 
why not shorten it to three days? The money that you save by cutting out an extra park day, um, you would save money on tickets, on hotel, on food. That should cover Genie Plus for your group for your three-day trip. Plus, because you have Genie Plus, your wait times on many attractions will be shorter, allowing you to enjoy the parks fully during your three days, making the day that you removed unnecessary. So you could shorten your trip and add Genie Plus instead. Another way to make Genie Plus fit into your budget is to skip the park hopper option. Park hopping is expensive and many people find it to be a total waste of money, myself included, for the most part. There is so much to see and do in each park, you really don't need it. So save that money and put it towards Genie Plus. I think that would be a much better use of your money to do one park per day and then add Genie Plus. If you know that you want to use Genie Plus, make sure you purchase it at the time you purchase your park tickets. This is going to guarantee you get it at that lowest cost. Because like we talked about, Disneyland can raise the cost of Genie Plus from day to day based on crowd levels and demands. So if you wait to purchase it until you arrive at the park, until your vacation, you're not really going to know how much they're going to be charging for Genie Plus, but you can purchase it with your park ticket and this will lock you in at the lower price. How does Genie Plus work at Disneyland? Like I said, it can feel a little complicated at first, but once you get the hang of it, once you start using it, you're going to be like, oh, I got this. I'm good. But here's a few things you need to know. If you purchase Genie Plus with your park tickets, then it's going to be on your Disneyland app ready for you to use as soon as you enter the park, as long as you have your park tickets loaded onto the app. If you haven't purchased Genie Plus for the day, then you can purchase it using the Disneyland app as soon as you enter the park on the day of your visit. Now, if you're going to be adding it on a day of your visit, I would definitely do it in the morning. You can't show up to Disneyland at 4.30 in the afternoon and purchase Genie Plus and feel like you're going to get any value out of it because you just won't. So if you're adding it to your day, definitely do it in the morning so you can take full advantage of it. You can add your whole group to your Disneyland app by scanning in their tickets into the Disneyland app. And then one person will be able to make Genie Plus reservations for your entire group, which is really helpful. Now, you can make your first Genie Plus selection after you enter the park. So guests must be scanned into the park for the day to begin making Genie Plus reservations. So maybe you head over with your kids, but your husband stays back at the hotel for a little while. You can start making Genie Plus reservations for you and your kids who are already scanned into the park, but you won't be able to make any for your husband until he is scanned in for the day. Now, once you're scanned into the parks, maybe you decide to go back to the hotel later in the day for a break. You can make a Genie Plus selection from your hotel after everyone has scanned into the park. So if you decide to leave later in the day and go take a nap, while you're in your hotel, you can make another reservation for later in the day. Everybody has to be scanned into the park before you can start doing that. I hope that makes sense. All right, once you've made your first reservation, then you will wait for your return time. And when the return time comes, then you'll use your Disneyland app to scan into the lightning lane so that you can enjoy the attraction via the shorter line. If you have any questions about this, then definitely ask a nearby cast member if you're like, I don't know where to find my barcode so that I can scan into the lightning lane. They do this all day long, so just ask them. They are happy to help. You're not able to make another Genie Plus reservation until you have scanned into the lightning lane for your current reservation. However, there is an exception to that rule that a lot of people don't understand and you need to understand this because it can make or break your trip. Most people assume you can only have one Genie Plus reservation at a time, and that is not true. If your return time is more than two hours out, then at the two-hour mark, you'll be able to make another Genie Plus reservation. So at that point, you would be holding more than one Genie Plus reservation. So maybe it's 11 o'clock in the morning, and you decide to make a Genie Plus reservation for Space Mountain. 
So you make your reservation, but you see that the return time isn't until three o'clock that afternoon and it's 11 o'clock in the morning. That's fine. Make your Genie Plus reservation for Space Mountain, but that doesn't mean you can't use Genie Plus until three o'clock because that wait time is pushed out farther in the day. In two hours, you can make another Genie Plus Lightning Lane reservation. So that means at one o'clock, you will be able to go back into the Disneyland app and you can make a second reservation. So maybe you go back in at one o'clock and you're like, oh, we're going to do Buzz Lightyear, which is available at 1.30. Perfect. To book that, go and enjoy Buzz Lightyear and then you can make another one. Maybe you're going to make one for Autopia that is available at 2.30. Perfect. You can do that. Make another one. Go enjoy Autopia. And then it's 3 o'clock and you can go and use your Space Mountain Genie Plus reservation. So what I like to do is I like to set an alarm on my phone if our Lightning Lane reservation is pushed out later in the day to remind me when I can make another one. So just remember, you can make a new reservation as soon as you scan into your current reservation. So if you are heading to Indiana Jones and you scan in while you're waiting in line for Indiana Jones, then hurry and make another Lightning Lane reservation. So you always have one that you're waiting on and you always have one coming up. So you can make a new reservation as soon as you scan into your current one or two hours after you make a reservation if the return time is later in the day. Like I mentioned before, Genie Plus allows you to use the Lightning Lane one time per day per eligible attraction. All right, let's talk about how to use Genie Plus efficiently because there's a little bit of a strategy involved to using Genie Plus. And if you know how to use it, then you can make the most out of your time and out of your money. So here are some tips that will help you maximize your time when you're using Genie Plus. This first part is for park hoppers. So if you're park hopping and using Genie Plus, you should plan to arrive early. I recommend arriving at the gates at least 30 to 60 minutes early. This is called rope dropping, and it's a great way to start your day because you are going to get there before most of the other guests, and you're going to be able to start using your Genie Plus Lightning Lane reservations right out of the gate. So again, this is for park hoppers. As soon as you get to Disneyland or California Adventure, whatever park you're starting in, you can make your first Genie Plus selection once you're inside the parks. As soon as your ticket is scanned, make your first reservation. And you should be able to ride that selection immediately as soon as the park opens. So if you're going for Guardians of the Galaxy, as soon as it opens, it's going to say your Guardians of the Galaxy return time is available. Go and do it right then. And then as soon as you've scanned in for that reservation, make your next selection and just keep making selections and you're going to be able to get on a bunch of attractions first thing in the morning. Some of the Genie Plus attractions are more popular and will have longer wait times as the day goes on. So for this reason, I suggest making Lightning Lane reservations for the more popular attractions earlier in the day just to save some time. So Guardians of the Galaxy, Toy Story in California Adventure Park, Space Mountain and Indiana Jones over at Disneyland, those ones are the most popular. If you're visiting during Halloween time or the holidays, Haunted Mansion Holiday is incredibly popular and return times for that book up quickly, so that should be one of your first Lightning Lane selections. So what you're going to do is you're going to ride as many as possible, as many rides using Lightning Lane or not if you're you know, doing some other attractions that don't have Genie Plus Lightning Lanes, and then you're going to be able to hop over to the other park at 11 a.m. or later, anytime after 11. So once you do park hop, you'll be able to do the same thing. Now, you should always be holding a Genie Plus reservation, and if you have to wait for a reservation time, then fill that time by seeing shows or having a meal or riding other attractions. Now, you can make, say you're over in California Adventure for your starting park, but you're hopping over to Disneyland later in the day. You can make a Genie Plus Lightning Lane reservation for Disneyland as long as the return time is after 11 a.m. So if you're over in DCA and you're like, oh, I need to make a Lightning Lane reservation for Space Mountain because I know that's going to go fast, you can definitely do that as long as the return time for The Space Mountain Reservation is after 11 a.m. 
Now for non-park hoppers, which is what I recommend, like I already said, you can take your day a little slower. I still recommend arriving at the gates at least 30 to 60 minutes early for rope dropping, so you can really take advantage of that time when rides are very slow, or the wait times are very slow, I mean. As soon as you are scanned in, you could start making Genie Plus reservations. However, if you're not park hopping, I want you to wait a little bit before you start making those Genie Plus selections. I want you to hit those lower rope drop wait times. So if you were going to make a Lightning Lane selection for Big Thunder Mountain Railroad right at 8 a.m., you would totally be able to walk right on that ride using your Genie Plus Lightning Lane. They'd scan it in and you'd walk right on. But because you're rope dropping, you would be able to walk on Big Thunder Mountain anyway without using your Genie Plus Lightning Lane. So I don't want you to waste your lightning lanes first thing in the morning. Save them for later in the day when crowds are higher and wait times are longer. So I suggest waiting about 90 minutes after the park opens to begin making your Genie Plus reservations. Use that first 90 minutes to hit some rides that don't offer Genie Plus and will have longer wait times during the day or that you know you'll want to ride more than once. Like Big Thunder Mountain, go ride it first thing in the morning. Walk on, and then you can use your Genie Plus reservation to ride it later in the day again. Like I mentioned before, some of the Genie Plus attractions are more popular and will have longer waits as the day goes on. So for this reason, I suggest making Lightning Lane reservations for some of the more popular attractions earlier in the day. Just like I said before, Guardians of the Galaxy, Toy Story, Indiana Jones, Space Mountain, those ones are all going to have longer wait times in the day, which means their return times are going to get pushed out farther and farther. So take care of those earlier in the day and it will save you time later on. Because attractions like Little Mermaid and Buzz Lightyear, they're always going to have quick return time. So you can wait until later in the afternoon, later in the evening, later at night even, and you're still going to be able to get return times for those. But that's not going to be the case for some of those more popular attractions. Hopefully, this helps sort things out for you. I am at Disneyland testing Genie Plus strategies frequently so that I can share more information with you and so that I can create helpful touring plans. I talk a lot about Genie Plus on my stories, especially when I'm in the parks over on Instagram. So I have done a lot of testing on Genie Plus. It's one of my favorite things. So hopefully, everything I've been talking about makes sense. I did want to talk about the multi-experience pass because if you're using Genie Plus, you really might encounter this. So sometimes when you're using Genie Plus, a ride that you have a Lightning Lane reservation for will go down. If an attraction is closed for any reason while you're holding a Lightning Lane return time for that attraction, then you're automatically going to get a multi-experience pass added to your Disneyland app. And this is a really great thing. If you see this, if this happens to you, it's like you've got a little sprinkle of Disney magic. So get excited. A multi-experience pass is good for lots of different attractions and even includes some that don't have lightning lanes. So if you've ever wished that you could like skip the line for Jungle Cruise or Alice in Wonderland or Dumbo, this multi-experience pass will do just that. So here's how it works. Let's say you're waiting on a Genie Plus return time for Indiana Jones and you check your app and you notice that Indiana Jones has been shut down and you start to feel sad because you're like, oh my gosh, we were just getting ready to ride it and now it's down and we don't get to ride it. But then you remember that this is actually a great thing because you're going to get a multi-experience pass. The pass usually shows up pretty quickly on your app and once it's on your app, you can use it for a lot of different rides. Indiana Jones, along with Space Mountain and Matterhorn, are top-tier rides at Disneyland, and that means if you have a multi-experience pass that you got from Indiana Jones, then you can use it for just about any attraction in the park except for Peter Pan and Rise of the Resistance. Now, I like to use my multi-experience passes for Alice in Wonderland because that line is usually pretty long, and I love skipping it. But you'll be able to find a list of all the attractions you can use on your multi-experience pass right on the pass. So there'll be a little button that you can click on that will give you a list of rides. And the pass is good for all day. So you 
can use it whenever you feel like. You can use it right then or you can wait till the end of the night and use it. Don't feel any pressure to use it quickly because it's good for the whole day. Now, just don't use it on Indiana Jones because since you never used your Genie Plus return time for Indiana Jones, you can make another Lightning Lane reservation for it as soon as it's operational again. So it's not like you're just out of luck with Indiana Jones. With your reservation for that attraction, you can make another reservation for Indiana Jones. Now, to use your multi-experience pass, just head to the attraction that you'd like to use it on and tell the cast member at the front that you have a multi-experience pass. And then they'll scan it for you and they'll tell you what to do from there. If you're holding a return time for a different lightning lane that's not a top tier attraction like Buzz Lightyear, you're not going to be able to use it to ride Space Mountain because they're on different levels. But make sure you just check the available attractions on your multi-experience pass and it's going to tell you what you can use it for. Once a few years ago, I had a multi-experience pass come on to my app from Space Mountain. I had been trying to ride Space Mountain and it went down and it was fine. I had already ridden it that day and I decided that I wanted to use it to ride the Storybook Land Canal Boats. And I went to the cast member and I was like, I have this multi-experience pass. I'd like to use it here. And she looked at me like I'd lost my mind. And she was like, no, you don't want to use this here. You want to use this on one of the bigger rides. And she showed me the list. She's like, look, these are all the rides you can go on. You can go on Space Mountain. You can go on Matterhorn. You can go on Big Thunder Mountain. And I was like, I know, but I've already done all those today. And I really want to do Storybook Land Canal Boats. And the line's like 30 minutes and I'd love to skip it. And she just kept trying to push me away from the idea and be like, no, seriously, go use this on something different. She finally was like, okay, if this is what you want to do with your multi-experience pass, then here you go. And she let me in. And I got to skip the whole line and go right to the front, which was very fun for me. Um, But I thought it was funny. I'm like, I get where you're coming from. I know how it works. I know what it means. And thank you for looking out for me and trying to point me to a better ride. But this really is how I want to use my pass. I thought that was funny. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed with the idea of using Genie Plus at Disneyland, I've got you covered because I love you. If you want a stress-free Disneyland day, then download one of my awesome touring plans with Genie Plus. These plans are kind of like a secret weapon to tackle the parks without dealing with the crazy line. So I've broken these plans down step by step so you can just relax and enjoy the magic. Whether you're a Disneyland pro or you're a first timer, these plans, they've got your back. No more worrying about what to do next or waiting forever in lines. Just download the plans, follow along, and get ready for a day full of Disney fun the easy way. I'll put a link to them in the show notes so you can check it out. All right, let's talk about some frequently asked questions about using Disney Genie Plus. A question I get asked a lot is, can I park hop and use Genie Plus in both parks? Yes. When you purchase Genie Plus, it's good for both parks. So this will give you the very most value out of Genie Plus because I think there's 21 attractions between both parks that you can use it on. I mean, you can't park hop until 11, but this means that you can use it on the most attractions if you're able to hop back and forth. Another question I get asked all the time that is so hard to answer is the question, is Genie Plus worth the cost? I get asked this constantly and it's really hard for me to answer. So I'll tell you what I tell everyone. Maybe. Genie Plus may be worth the extra cost for your group, but it may not be. So please don't feel like it's necessary to purchase Genie Plus to have a great trip. It's definitely not. Genie Plus is convenient and it will definitely save you time waiting in line. But if that added cost blows your budget, then don't do it. You can still have a great time without it. I have noticed that Disney is inflating the posted wait time. So I just wanted to put that out there. You can expect to wait probably on average 10 to 15 minutes less than the posted wait times at most attractions. I mean, on average. So 
take a look at wait times. Open up the Disneyland app and go to attractions and just start checking wait times at different times throughout the day and kind of decide if you're able to wait and you don't think it will be a big deal, then don't worry about Genie Plus. Before you rush to buy it, though, make sure your kids are tall enough to ride most of the Genie Plus rides because there's no sense in buying it if it's just you and you're taking your two small kids and you buy it and then you find out that they're too small to ride most of the bigger attractions, then that would be a bummer. So make sure you measure your kids, find out what they can ride before you make your decision on whether or not you're going to add it to your visit. If I am visiting by myself or just with my husband, then I will add Genie Plus. An extra $30 is worth it for me to skip the standby line on all those attractions. If I'm visiting with my family of six for only one or two days, then I will probably add it because the time we're saving waiting in line would allow us to enjoy more of the parks. However, if I'm visiting with my family for like five days, I probably wouldn't purchase it for each day. The added expense would be too much for my budget and we would have enough time to wait in the standby lines because we're going to be there for so long. My favorite thing about Disney Genie Plus, other than it lets me skip the long standby lines, is that it gives guests options. So you can choose to wait in the standby line, or you could choose to wait in a single rider line, or you could choose to pay for Genie Plus, or you could choose to add an individual lightning lane. Whatever you want, you get to choose. And I love that it gives people more options to decide what's best for their group. And there's no one choice that's right for everyone. And I think that makes the Disneyland Resort better overall. If you are on the fence about it, then don't purchase it with your ticket. Just give it a try for one day and see what you think because you can always add it on later if you want. Another question, when can I start making Lightning Lane a reservation? You can start making your Lightning Lane reservations as soon as you've scanned into the park for the day. Once you've scanned in, you can make your reservations from anywhere, like I said. So if you decide to head back to the hotel, you can make another Lightning Lane reservation from your hotel. Just remember, you have to be scanned into the parks first for the day. This is different than Disney World, so a lot of people get confused. Can one person make Lightning Lane reservations for the whole group? Yes, one person can make all the Lightning Lane reservations for your group, up to 10 people. You just need to make sure you have everyone's ticket on your Disneyland app and everyone has to have entered the park for the day. So you can add people to your Disneyland app under the tickets and passes section. I would do that before you get to Disneyland so that you have time and you're not stressed because you're trying to hurry and go start your park day. Once you've added everyone, then when you go to make a Lightning Lane reservation, you'll be able to select which guests you'd like to include in the reservation. How often can I make Lightning Lane reservations? You can make a new Lightning Lane reservation as soon as you scan into your current reservation or two hours after you make the reservation, whichever comes first. You'll be able to see what time you can make your next reservation on the Disneyland app, so check that often. And I like to set a timer, like I said, on my phone so that I don't miss making my next reservation. Does using Genie Plus drain my phone battery? Yes, using the Disneyland app in general will drain your battery. Plus, you're going to have your phone out constantly to take pictures and videos of your amazing vacation. So make sure you have a portable charger of some kind. I like to put my phone on low power mode as soon as I enter the parks to help conserve the battery. I found this makes a huge difference. Phew, that was a lot of information about using Genie Plus at Disneyland. I hope it was helpful and informative. I hope you feel confident about using it. Like I said, if you do decide to use Genie Plus, it can feel a little overwhelming at first. But once you make a couple of reservations, you're going to get the hang of it. And you're going to remember this episode and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I know how to do this. And it will really be simple and start to be intuitive. That's my hope. I really think you can do it. I believe in you. Well, that is all the time I have for today. I hope you have a really great week. Uh, If you have any questions about using Genie Plus at Disneyland, then let me know. I am so happy to answer your questions. The best way to get a hold of me is really over on Instagram through my DMs. I 
answer every single DM that people send me. And I'm usually pretty quick at it. If you send me a message over on Facebook, it's probably going to be like a couple months before I find it. But head over to Instagram. There's a link in the show notes. Send me a DM with your question and I will happily, happily answer you. All right. I will be back next week with something new. Thanks so much for listening. We'll talk soon.